What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today, we're going to be talking about what is the best ham radio? And likely, if you've asked me that question and I sent you a link to this video, I really want you to watch it. So I hope it's helpful. And yes, the quotes are there implying you're asking this question. So this is a live stream. I want to hear your comments in there as we go through it. And yeah, I got a poll coming up too. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the memes as we get things started here. Bong. <laughs> All right. How's it going, everybody? I hope you're having a great weekend. I have received yet another pile of these questions. What is the best ham radio? What is the best beginner ham radio? What is the best cheap ham radio? What is just the best ham radio if money is no object? And that's what we're going to talk about today. I will have some example or recommendations, my personal recommendations, but hopefully after watching this, you will be empowered to hopefully come up with your own ideas on what the best ham radio is. And that's the whole point of this. Really quick, want to give a shout out to the merch store, hamtactical.com. If you want to get yourself uh, my sweet FT8 hoodie, go to all uh, and the FT8 collection. There it is. Everything FT8. You too could have a zip up hoodie. I got a ton of comments on that uh, from the San Clemente trip, but there you go. That's pretty much all I want to talk about before we get right into the slides. And so let's do that now. I am watching the chat, so as questions come up, I will take them. But first, we gotta we gotta go on a little little thought experiment here. And again, thanks everybody for coming out here. I appreciate it. But we got a lot to talk about, and this is gonna involve looking at some radios live, hopefully, and some other fun stuff. So here we go. What is the best ham radio I can buy? Well, let's turn that around into something that pretty much most people that are watching me right now can understand. If I were to ask you, what is the best car? that I could buy. Hey, you watching me right now, you you ha you drive. What is the best car that I could buy? Huh. Have you ever thought about that before? How would you answer that question? Well, of course, you know the answer, right? It depends. <laughs> that's the that's the whole thing. So that's what we're going to be talking about is it depends. And I just dropped a poll in the in the live chat for those that are watching. The reality is is that all of this comes down to it depends. Right. I've got a, a tabletop full of, of radios here. You've seen all of them, heard about all of them, probably watched the reviews on all of them. But what does it always come back to? Well, it comes back to some good features that you're really looking for and some features that you won't mind having other features not available if you don't have that feature. Right. So really, the answer is up to you. I can tell you straight up like this radio has this many features and yeah, it does uh, promise and, and deliver on that promise. But if you don't know what you want, then you're possibly going to be throwing your money not down the drain necessarily because you are buying something that is likely going to work no matter what it is you want to do. But there are some niches within this hobby that if you go down one rabbit hole and there are many rabbit holes, you've kind of already cut yourself off at the pass, right? So the answer for a lot of this is it's going to depend. It's going to depend on what you want, what you want to do. That's not it. There we go. Yeah, a radio is a tool, right? Its purpose is to exchange information via radio frequencies. It's what the radio can, can process as far as information that we're going to be most interested in. And those are the things that we're going to look out for and those kind of user controls and the capabilities that it has. So make sure that when you are thinking about your first radio, right, what are the considerations of that? Start thinking about that as, as we go through this. But what is the point of all these things? They take information, likely your, your voice. That's what most people use radios for. And they turn it into RF, right? That RF gets picked up by another radio. And then you can listen to it on the other end, right? Makes sense? Hope so. Hope so. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> I keep doing that. Keep clicking the wrong one. And let's see. Got you guys there. Okay, good. So when we think about a tool, right? So let's let's go off of vehicles for a second. Let's talk about tools, right? A wrench is a tool that we use for tightening or loosening nuts, right? A Leatherman pocket tool 
can tighten and loosen nuts, not as effectively as the wrench, but the Leatherman also does a lot more things, right? So there's all these items that needs to go on your list. And if you just took the main bullet points, which is the, the you know, the first indented ones, the one that's left most uh, justified, those are the items like you should write down on like a notepad or in your phone and you should add functionality, cost, reliability, durability. Those are two separate things we're going to talk about. The functionality is, well, what is it that I want it to do? What is this tool's primary job? Do I want the tool to be like, fantastic at its primary job a wrench works great tightening and loosening bolts but it kind of also works as a hammer occasionally it's not necessarily recommended but it can do in a pitch depending on how long it is for instance or can it do many jobs and maybe fit in a small size and go in your pocket like the leatherman right the leatherman pocket tool prime example every tool is a hammer that's right kyle at the end of the day every radio is a hammer too if you think about it <laughs> cost most of what we're talking about, particularly for people starting out in this hobby, are going to run up uh, into what it's almost like a the danger zone, right? There's a spot where y you don't know if you're going to love the hobby. And so cost is really important here because your dollars could really be wasted in the sense that you sink four hundred dollars into a radio and go, I I hate this hobby. I don't I don't like it at all. Right. So that's something you've got to be cognizant of when you start thinking about, hey, what am I going to do with this hobby? What am I going to do with it? Do I even, am I even, inter am I even doing the thing that you know, I might be most interested in? Maybe you technicians that just got licensed, you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to get on the repeaters. I'm going to work simplex every day. I'm going to drive around in my car with simplex radio blasting. But the reality is, is maybe you'd be better off on high frequency HF radio, right? Those long distance contacts where we refract bounce the RF off of the atmosphere. And then reliability. So reliability means you turn it on and it does the thing. But in radio sense, I also add when you turn it on and it's set to a frequency and you transmit, is, is it always going to be on that frequency? Is it going to transmit there effectively? Is it going to overheat? There are radios that have a tendency of overheating. We add fans in some cases to one of them that comes to mind. Who can guess which... Uh, which radio I'm talking about that you got to kind of have a fan on it, otherwise it kind of overheats. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. Versus durability. Reliability and durability are similar, but durability is like the physical components of the radio, right? If you're going to be taking this outdoors and you're going to be running around in the dirt and the mud and the rain and you're going to drop it and all that stuff, well, some radios are just, just not up to that task, nor were they designed to be up to that task. That's something that you need to add to this list and make sure you're only including options that are going to work for these items above. Now, obviously there's more, right? When when we buy a tool, there, there's more items that we need. And sometimes we need a very special tool to do a very special job. For instance, a uh, cotter, a cotter pin or a cotter ring rent uh, pliers. You can make pliers like needle nose pliers work, but often, you know, those are not really very effective or a cotter pin tool is what I'm thinking of. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm thinking of the little spring ones for the, the ring, the little retention rings, spring rings. Or, you guys will correct me in the chat. There are tools that de are designed to do a very specific job and they do that job very well and they're not very good at other things versus you can use needle nose pliers in some cases. In fact, my dad did that. He sanded down the tips of needle nose pliers, bent them down, rehardened them. And those were his little pliers that he would use to snap ring. Perfect. Thank you. There you go. Snap ring pliers. Yeah, you're not going to do much for snap ring pliers other than remove and install snap rings. That's kind of their design. Does that mean that like you shun them and not use them because it's this unitasking tool and you know, that's kind of it? No, not at all. But at the same time, there are radios that work pretty well at these one kind of things. And if you try and do anything else with it, never mind that they're not advertised to do those things, it's not going to do very well, right? Hey, Carl, whoa, Carlos with the super chat. Thank you. KC3WHJ says, I owe you a lot for the knowledge. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. For, happy to give the knowledge and appreciate it. Went straight for and got the general because of HRCC and ham study. Thanks. 73. Hey, that's awesome. And I think he's holding his radio right there. So I'll give you a thumbs up, bud. Congratulations to you on going straight to general. 
excellent job. And hey, if you're watching this live and you'd like to keep the party going after the show, make sure to join us on the Discord. We have a Discord server. It's a 24-7 live chat room. It's just about ham radio, and we wrap up this show, and we go over there. There's a voice chat and a text chat, and we'll be going live to answer your questions specifically. I'll answer questions on this live stream, but we go multiple hours just answering amateur radio questions. So appreciate it if you join us. Link is in the description. So that's that's kind of the, the major point here, right? Uh, good question from Scott. Are you into amateur radio for a service, perform a job, or into as a hobby, experiment and explore? So I don't, I don't think service in the sense of perform a job is, is right there. If you would have just hung it as service, that would have been fine. It's the, in parentheses, perform a job I disagree with. So the FCC views amateur radio as a service in the sense that they are giving us access, and I say giving us, they're, 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 they're cordoning off frequency spaces for us in the electromagnetic spectrum. And the purpose, the benefit to society of having this amateur radio service is that it incentivizes people for largely no money to learn about RF, both its operation, being a technician of radios, and the advancement of electronics and radio frequency equipment. So that's the FCC service. I support that. You can't really not be supporting the amateur radio service while you're operating your radio. You are doing both while you're either enjoying it as a hobby, if you're doing a parks on the air, if you're building a kit, if you're building an antenna and doing math, you are participating in the amateur radio service. Now, there's a misnomer that people get confused on and they think that service means like emergency preparedness. That is true, but it's not what the radio service is meant to be. The radio service is to continue to grow a society or incentivize a society to learn about radio. Think about it. When the amateur radio service came about, when kind of we're, we're all collectively wrapping our heads around radio, the country as a whole said, hey, this radio thing, it might take off. It might be a good idea if we incentivized people to learn more about it because I bet you that's going to open jobs for making radios, fixing radios, selling radios, and operating radios, right? Literally, like, public radio operations. Well, instead of the government saying, well, we'll just send everybody to college and we'll educate everybody. How about instead we gave them a sandbox that they could play in, cost little to the government to allow them to do that. And by say, give them, I mean, again, secure the frequency space for them. It's almost like free college that you, ha that you get to pursue yourself if you think about it. That's really what the radio service is all about. Always has been, always will be. That's the whole point. So what are your radio goals? That's really the big thing. When you ask me, right, you who have the hypothetical human being who sent me this question, right, what amateur radio should I buy? What is the best amateur radio? What amateur radio is good for a technician? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. So what are your goals? What kind of robustness do you need in a radio, right? What kind of budget do you have? Big, important question. What is your budget, right? And I did it again. Click the wrong thing. <laughs> Sorry. So let's just take you a couple of examples. I'm going to break down three of them, and then we're going to look at some radios. And I'm going to talk about what I think their pros and their cons are, which when we look at the dollar amount for some of these radios, you're going to be like, well, oh, my gosh, what am I supposed to do with this information? So it's possible if you're a new ham, right? New hams get access to 2 meters and 70 centimeters among higher frequency bands as well as some lower bands like 6 meters and 10 meters and all that other stuff. Your goals are probably going to be to get yourself a nice 2 meter and 70 centimeter handheld or mobile radio. Likely, you may live in an area where there are radio repeaters and a radio repeater is kind of like a a party line in the air, if you will, right? You hop onto a repeater, everybody can listen to the stuff that is being transmitted through that repeater, and everybody that can have access to it with the information that they need can transmit through it so people can hear, right? Repeaters are really helpful for lots of reasons, but those are an example. And then if you're going to be on repeaters, you likely also need a bunch of memory channels, right? Memory channels, depending on how many repeaters are in your area, in my case, down here in Southern California, if I just go up or down from where I'm at 50 to 100 miles, I'll be in and around probably 400 registered repeaters, just 
rough estimate, right? Rough ballpark number. So I need more than a Baofeng because that only has 125 memory channels. Now, am I going to use all those repeaters? No, absolutely not. It's kind of like having, you know, 200 cable channels. Am I really going to use all those? No. Are those interesting to me? No. And most of them are probably not even very active. That's also one of the realities. If you're a new technician, you might be interested in 10 meter radio, right? Hopefully you are. We're entering into the high point of a solar cycle at uh, 2025 will be at the peak where the solar intensity is the highest and the higher frequency, high frequency, <laughs> the higher frequency bands, a part of HF radio, high frequency radio, those are going to work the best, right? It's going to be really, really great. So even you CB operators, you're going to be doing fantastic from here till 2006 and 2007 as we start to wane in the solar cycle. So 10 meters is huge right now. As a technician, you might be like, yeah, I want to get into 10 meters. I want to go do one of those parks on the air things that you guys are always talking about. Perfect. Then that would go on your list, right? We're adding to the list of things we want to do. No repeaters in your area? Okay, well, then maybe you have to settle with a digital voice radio. Maybe you're going to do something like DMR or D-Star or Yesu System Fusion. These are all modes of voice communication that is not necessarily proprietary, but is usually marketed by one of the major brands. Chinese radios generally do DMR. ICOM does D-Star, and Yesu does Yesu System Fusion. Hopefully you figure that out. Now, if you don't have repeaters in your area to do digital voice, then likely you're going to need to use something called a hotspot, which is a $100 to $200 up to even $300 or $400 device that kind of takes the connects. It's a, it's a bridge point. Think of it as a bridge. It's taking RF in and out. It's transmitting it. And it's connecting it, bridging it to the internet, right? That's really what it's doing so that you can connect to one of those internet-connected talk groups online. And my favorite technician type of mode of operation is APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System. Yes, it used to be called Automatic Position Reporting System. You can go look up the white paper back in the hallowed early aughts, and you will find that that's what it used to stand for. So FYI there. Don't come at me when I use them interchangeably sometimes. So let's go back to our items on a tool. Right? We're going to approach ham radio as though it's a tool. We're going to budget for this tool. We're going to think, I'm really into this. I know that there's going to be incidental costs above and beyond just buying a thing. A thing meaning a radio, right? So what are those incidentals? A battery, upgrading the antenna. Maybe you want a hand mic because you want the radio somewhere off your body, maybe on a backpack or something like that. Those are accessories, right? Or a drop-in charger. One of my favorite things for radio I use all the time, a drop-in charger. You're going to expect to spend about $300, less than $300 for what I would call a middle-of-the-road handheld radio and uh, less than $400, maybe a little bit more than that for a mobile radio. And that likely mobile radios can go up because you're going to have to buy the antenna and you're going to have to get the coax and you're going to have to power it somehow, run wires, all that fun stuff. If it's in a car, you know, you can connect it to the battery. You get the idea. So these are just a couple of options. And I'm, I'm going to show you the, the two of them right now. I, I want to I want to talk a little bit about uh, two radios in particular. So I'm I'm going to go through this cheap, rugged, cheap mobile. And I'm going to give kind of my my shout outs for what I like. So for cheap, you know, handheld radio, and I mean cheap, right? You're getting started. You don't know if you're going to like the hobby. Maybe you're like, ah, you know, may, maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play around with it. I'm going to load some repeaters. I'm going to see what's out there. And then, hey, at the worst case scenario, I've, I've got it for emergencies. I'm not saying to do this. I'm saying that might be a situation you find yourself in. And that's okay. I'm hoping that we're making amateur radio fun enough for you all and interesting enough that you don't, you know, abandon it. But so uh, two items, the Baofeng GT5R and the Yesu FT4X. I'll try to put links in the description. Uh, I forgot a lot of them uh, as I was preparing the slides. But anyway, let's take a look at, at those two radios. And, and I want to I wanna point out some things. All right, so here's, here's the Yesu and the, the Baofeng right next to each other here. Now, the Baofeng is going to, I don't know, anywhere between $20 and $30, $35, close to $40 with shipping. And then the Yesu is, is almost, it's almost the same radio, to be honest. Not the same in terms of, like, parts, but 
similar type of architecture. They, they work um, under a similar type of radio design. The Baofeng, you can see it on the screen here, right? You can see how you got an upper and lower channel. See, for me, that's like, that's really nice. I like having an upper channel that I listen to and a lower channel that I scan on and I can watch the numbers change as I'm scanning along. Uh, Baofeng's not great. I, I think we all know that. It's incredibly cheap. I mention it because, come on, guys, th this is the thing that people buy. I mean, we all know that. Everybody buys them even if they want if they want it. Even if they don't want it, they end up buying one of these. The Yesu is very similar, but this thing is, you know, $80, right? And it's it's almost, it's almost the same. Downside with the uh, FT4, and I think I killed the battery on this one. I did. The downside is it only has a single line screen, right? Both of them, um, out of the box, if you buy these two radios out of the box, they kind of require that they be put into a desktop charger. That's provided by Baofeng and Yesu. It comes in the box. And if you want to charge off of a coaxial unit, you actually have to buy this battery for the Baofeng to be able to do that. This is an extended battery. We call it an extendo, right? Extendo. You need a coaxial plug here to be able to do that, right? That's actually really nice to have in addition to a drop-in charger. I like both. Important for me. Because what I end up doing with, with Baofengs is you end up collecting a lot of these batteries. You leave this battery in the charger and you throw another one in the radio, go about your business, and then you can just swap them out so you've always got a battery. And you can do the same thing with the Yesu, but if you're in the field for some reason and this dies on you, you're you're not going to have something to power it, right? So that's just an example of like, well, the, the price difference here. What what's the what's the deal on the price difference? Well, my little my little buddy here is is kind of why the prices are so different. This guy, actually, this one does. This one is advertised as having no spurious emissions. This GT five X, which is why sorry GT five R, which is why I recommend it because it it does meet FCC requirements of not transmitting out of band, and and it FT the FT four X is also supposed to be able to do that. But you know that's just two talking points on that point, right? Just two radios that you would consider entry level. And let's see. So as far as my choice for rugged radios, well, that's going to be a radio that you pay more for, right? You're going to pay a lot more for it. And then you're going to end up with a radio that does a very similar job, right? But will have more features. And, and we can take a look at one of those. And it's actually the one that I recommend. If you've got the Scratch, it's, you know, 200 something, uh, 200, 250, about 230, somewhere in there. We can look it up. The VX6, the Yesu, right? Let's take a look at that in a second here. And then as far as cheap mobiles go, so a mobile was what? It's the one that, you know, looks like the center console radio that you shove into a car. The mobile radios are going to be 50 watt output. You're going to have to supply your own antenna. You're going to have to have coax to go to that antenna. You have to feed it with power if you're not going to give it 12 volt like off of a car, for instance, right? So important, important to keep that in mind. The 2730 middle of the road type radio, it does it, it does everything you want it to, right? It works on repeaters, it'll work simplex. It's those special features that you start to pay more for, the advanced features. So this, remember, new ham recommendations, not top of the line ham recommendations. And even then, I think I could bring all my YouTuber friends on here and we could argue probably all hour uh, for over an hour on just what is the best top of the line mobile amateur radio. I know we could do it for handheld, but you know, hey, you get the idea. I think I think everybody's kind of catching on to what I'm dropping here is that there really is no right answer. Speaking of no right answer, let's take a look at the poll. Uh, it looks like Oh, I lost it. <laughs> Pole's gone, guys. <laughs> I don't like the integration of this thing. Where's my pole? You got to love YouTube sometimes, guys. Absolutely wonderful. Great job. Great job. Anyway. <laughs> I know that the uh, It Depends won. Yeah, see, now, now T-Man, I expect that to be uh, a... Pro a prevalent answer, but you can't buy that anymore. Retail space, right? 
Them's the breaks with a lot of this stuff. All right. So let's take a look at that VX6R. There's the price. It's like I knew I wouldn't remember. $249.95 right now at Ham Radio Outlet. Go check it out. It's tri-band. Whoa, tri-band, Josh. That's kind of like your Leatherman example. Two meters and 70 centimeters. It does five watts output. And then on 1.25 meters, it does about one watt output. So, yeah, it's not it's not putting out all the ponies onto the, uh, the two... 20 um, megahertz band space but it still works there right it it works doesn't work great to use that leatherman example but it works right it's a submersible handheld it has 900 memory channels it has 24 memory banks so you can say have a if you are part of an amateur radio emergency preparedness service like Aries or Racy's you could have a bank that was just devoted to frequencies that you most often used when you were volunteering your time with a group like Aries or something like that so that way you could put the radio on that memory bank and then it it won't you won't see any of those other memory those frequencies that are on other channels for your local rag chewing chewing the fat type frequency that you're normally on because you sir are volunteering your time in the amateur radio service right now that's super important for some people but for a lot of people they don't care for some people this is a make or break this is the defining item that makes a radio good or not good from their point of view. There's a couple of radios that have come out recently that don't have memory banks and people lose their mind over it, right? It's a real thing, right? So that goes back to the car argument. Well, I gotta have a I gotta have a vehicle that has a, a truck bed. Okay, well then I, I, I very well can't have a Honda Civic then, because that's just not gonna work, right? Those are things that you should you should have on your list. And for the new ham, you may not know if you need that, right? Yeah. Uh, and can it inter and it can interface with the Mobi linked TNC4. So you you all of a sudden go from let's let's go back to the the tabletop here. So you go from a two hundred and fifty dollar radio. So here is that VX6 that I was mentioning. Pretty simple. It it also features just a single line for radio operation. Like that, you can see the call sign of the repeater I'm on. And you can scan through them all like that. 250 bucks, right? I've dropped this in the bottom of a pool, jumped in after it. It's totally fine. I did it on purpose, but regardless. So this guy is kind of like the big brother, the FT5R from Yesu. And it was, how much was this? $350 recently? What'd you do here, bud? So it was like $350, I think, at Hamvention, so $100 more, right? And this will do APRS, like built in. Ah, but does it do it well? Eh, it's kind of kludgy, right? It's, it's kind of hard to operate, kind of a pain. It works, and I like it because it works and it's durable in the field, but at the end of the day, I can just get one of these Mobi-linked TNC4s connected to this guy, and now I can tether my phone to this device and I can give that data to my phone. This radio won't connect to my phone. Roughly the same amount of money. I don't know what this is back up to retail, but yeah. Yeah, this is this is a fine option for most people. And in fact, you can two-part it. You can two-part it. You can just buy this and have a good HT in and around town, hiking, drop it in the lake, who cares, so long as you get it back. And then if you need to do APRS or packet or something like that, you can add this onto it and there you go. You don't necessarily have to step up to the most expensive radio to make that happen. And this is one of the more expensive radios, handheld at least. Yeah, see, we're getting all kinds of, and, and this is, you'll see that a lot, is, you know, Nick says, I love my VX6, best battery life of them all. Right, and that's another really good point. So, so Nick brings up a really fantastic point, is that how you power your radio and how long it can run in between charges kind of important kind of valuable i need to shut this off before it drives me crazy let's mute that and speaking of that vx6 in fact i'll go back just so i can show you let's let's take a look at the difference so nick brings up a good point about the battery on uh, on the vx6 here well let's turn it off let's turn both off actually and so here's the battery on the ft5 
It is a 22 milliamp hour battery pack. This has GPS and Bluetooth and uh, it'll do a PRS and all that versus the uh, VX6 has this little smaller pack. It's only 1370. But as a radio and running, doing repeater and uh, listening and transmitting on repeaters or transmitting simplex, this battery's a lot smaller than this one. So you might even be able to just pack two of these in your pack, have one backup, a spare you can swap out. And these batteries are less expensive than this guy's batteries. Hope I'm hope I'm scratching some itches here because the answer is not only it depends, but there really is no best radio. It's really up to you to have a frank discussion with yourself on which ones are the right for you. So let's go to the next level and say, okay, I just got my license. We have a couple of folks in the chat right now. I just got my general. I just upgraded. I went from technician to general. Maybe you haven't even spent that much time uh, in amateur radio doing the, doing the stuff operating on the air, building antennas, playing with radios, programming radios, programming DMR. You can go on and on. There's no ending really to this hobby. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at the chat too. I am going to take questions. I saw a couple of them. Don't, don't worry, we'll get back to it. But if you drop them, make sure you say the word question or at ham radio crash course so I see it. So you're a new general, person who asked me this hypothetical question that we're answering live. What do you want to do? Well, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll put my shoes into somebody's, I'll put my feet into somebody's shoes. I'll put my shoes on somebody's feet. We could do that too. We'll turn it all the way around. I, I like to think of a hypothetical new general as maybe having a small place in the home that they might be able to set up a smaller base station radio. Right. I think that's one of the best ways to experience HF personally. Love me some portable. Don't worry. We're going to talk about you portable guys in a second. You budgeting, budgeting, burgeoning portable operators. Um, but I really like having a 100 watt radio that has a, a space that it lives at that's connected to a permanent antenna and you can just get on the air with it. Until you have that, particularly for HF, a lot of you folks starting out are really not going to know the joy and fun that having a convenient radio is and really uh, conducive to getting you on the air and getting you active on the radio. So that would, that would be my thing is where's my starting point? New general, what would I recommend? Get yourself a 100 watt radio. And by that, I mean, you know, HF, meaning all the HF frequencies plus six meters. Some people lump six meters into HF, but it's not necessarily the case. This means that I don't really recommend a QRP radio. There are a ton of really great QRP radios, but I put that more in the portable category or for the ham that really knows that they want to get frustrated with radio at times. It, it makes the reward of making a comment really, really nice, but also um, it, it, it could be frustrating. I will give a shout out to Don here. I forgot to add that to the slide. Uh, straight up, if you're kind of a techie guy and, and you you want you're, you want to experience like software-defined radios, I really do like the Hermes Light 2.0. I did a video on that live. You can go back and watch that. I do recommend that. Don's the reason I bought it. So thanks for the recommendation there, Don. Great radio. Actually, uh, that's a really nice one too because you can scale that up, right? You could buy the inexpensive Hermes Light 2 and then you can later buy amplifiers for it. There you go. So you can get a little dip your toe in there and then start buying amplifiers. Pretty good. Now, the big thing, the big thing with HF radio and for mobiles, I'd say too, is that it's all subjective in terms of controls. The screen that you look at, the dials, the buttons, how many buttons there are on the screen, not enough buttons, the screen, the menu layout on the screen. It's all incredibly subjective, very, very subjective. It's really up to you to determine what you like. And sometimes I feel watching YouTube videos can only take you so far in, in learning that. So highly recommended that you try out a lot of these radios if you can. Go to a, an appropriate store, friend, ham club. We just had field day. Field day is a great opportunity to get your hands on some radios. So you're looking for HF plus six meters, a 100 watt radio, and 
some of these additional options is always good to have all in a box and interface that you enjoy using. Because if you don't enjoy using it, you're not going to use it. Trust me. Some, some of the good options that I recommend one USB cable for connection to a computer. So out the back of most ICOM radios and most Yaesu radios now, they have a USB-B connector that goes into a USB-A connector for your computer or laptop. Fantastic. Super recommended. You should look for radios that have that. Filtering of some kind. A lot of this is being done via SDR, software-defined radios. You need uh, some amount of filtering, and I recommend that, and also digital signal processing that can go along with the audio chain. So if you are in an area like me where you, you, you have above average noise, noise is just ambient RF trash that's there, sometimes DSP can help you, and sometimes throttling the filter in a little bit can help you too for picking out some of those signals, voices, data, whatever. CW, Morse code. I really like it when radios have voice and CW memories built in. So memory slots that you can say, you know, CQ, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, that kind of thing, right? And I hit a button, or in the case of like the ICOM radios, I hold that button down, it beeps, it waits six seconds, plays the audio, waits six seconds, plays the audio. Really, really helpful for contesting, field day, parks on the air, all that good stuff. An internal tuner is, I cared about it more when I was younger. I, I a, a newer a newer HF general type amateur radio operator. I don't really use the tuners that much anymore. I try to use resonant antennas. There are exceptions, but the exceptions would be like a sky loop, a doublet, those type of antennas where I would probably be using an external tuner for those and not really depending on the internal tuner in the radio. Right? My point of view. Right. And again, that's that's why there's no good. An there's no right answer here. And then I, I think as a new ham, if you can if you can spend it, a spectrum display with the waterfall. Right. So something that shows you that's not it. Where Oh, see, that's <laughs> I just saw smoking ape. I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> I just saw smoking ape. Hey, ape. How's it going? Where is it? Is this my guy? Nope, that's not it. Anyway, I want to have my radio up here, but it's not pulling up for some reason. Is this it? There it is. There's my radio. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about, a spectrum display, right? You see the waterfall on the bottom here, and I... There we go. So the the top is the... The top pink line is the spectrum display, and the waterfall is that intensity over time falling down, like waterfall. Let's, let's scroll up here. Oh, too far. Man, what's going on? Bands are dead. Did we just get sunspotted? I think we might have just got sunspotted. Anyway, not the point. But it's a nice little, uh, a nice little piece of uh, kit to have if you, if it's a part of the radio that you're potentially looking at. And it would sway me one direction or the other if both radios had a screen. Which one looks better? Which one do I like more? Or one has a screen and the other doesn't? You know. There you go. All right. So new general recommendations. And again, these are my recommendations. They're not. They're not a standard. There's no universal standard here. There's no objective right answer, meaning it's going to be situational. So it depends, right? The thesis of this uh, of this video. Depending on your budget, right? You're going to have to include things like an antenna, power, power supply, a big enough battery, coax. Running coax 75 feet, 100 feet gets really expensive these days. The cheap, cheap, is now we're starting to talk right like it, it's i'm putting a number on it but it goes up and down real fast and the ups and the downs they're they're kind of all over the place which we'll talk about so the cheap you're going to be under 800 bucks let's call it or you're going to be just north of 800 dollars for what i'll talk about a well-appointed station is probably going to be two thousand dollars and under for a new person a new general new to hf so some of the cheaper options are going to be under $1,000, Shegu G90. It already got mentioned earlier. That is the radio that overheats if you don't put a, a fan on it when you're doing digital modes. And then the, the Yaesu FT891. Now, we're going to talk about this guy too, but I put it there because it hits the price. Now, I will I will say I, I, I do want... 
I, I think that the Hermes deserves a shout out here. So I'll, I'll pull it up really fast. So I did a video on this one. Thanks, Don, for reminding me. You're totally right. Hermes Lite 2 is $269. You do have to run a computer with this. It's an SDR, Software Defined Radio. So it needs a network connection. It needs to connect to your network to be able to connect to a computer on said network. And that's how you use it. It only does uh, 5 watts, 10 watts out, depending on band. And you can get an amplifier for it that will get you to 50 or 100 watts or whatever. But at the price, $260, that's cheaper than... No, I'm not a robot. Get out of here. Uh, that is cheaper than the Shagu G90 at $269. So maybe maybe that, that works. That's a bit outside the recommendations, right? Because not 100 watts, as I said before. Not 100 watts. You want 100 watts. All right. Uh, Entry-level base station. Entry-level. I got a bunch of comments from folks about my use of the term entry-level and the radio be $1,000. That's just what the cost, guys. The, the Japanese radios... The entry level ones are about a thousand dollars, and yes, they have radios that are less expensive, like the Yaesu FT891 and the ICOM IC718. They are going to cost a thousand dollars and up for the base station entry level radio, and that is the reality. I think justified. There are plenty of people who think I'm crazy that um, that radios can cost that much, but. Here we are. I, th I think that they, based off what they do, it makes sense to me. You can disagree in the comments. Post your comments below also on, on that comment. Now, I, out of the three here, they're all good. The 710 and the FTDX10 are, I think I did that wrong too. It's not an FT-DX10, but it doesn't matter. You, you can Google both and you'll, look, and you'll see them. The 710, all the Yesus are newer than the ICOM uh, to the tune of about five years. If you got the scratch... I would point you towards the FTDX10. I think that is a very good radio for the money for an entry level radio. That will take you from entry level well into whatever you want to call intermediate ham radio. Uh, it, it's a good radio. I, I highly recommend it. I think the 7300 is still a good option if you can find them used or you can find them on sale, which, speaking of sales, let's take a deep dive, a little. Little quick look at the 7300 and its brethren in the form of the Yesu because they're they're similar in the in the terms of what features they have. It's a 1099 right now at HRO, and yes, they have some in stock, so you can go check that out. You can find them used though because they've been around for a while now, right? About five years out on the market. There's your color display, your spectrum display. That was from a couple of years ago. There's actually a, an FT891 riding on top of it right now, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, I would I would highly encourage you reminder to look into what they cost used that that's going to be likely um, a good a good way for you to get into radio without having to drop necessarily thousand dollars on a radio. It'll be close though. It does it does HF plus six meters. It has a spectrum display and waterfall. It has an internal tuner, although I don't think that's very important, particularly for newer hams. You should focus on resonant antennas. One USB cable. In fact, it's one of the most prolific radios that featured the one USB cable. Good stuff. And the SDR filtering in the form of it being an SDR, you can adjust how wide or narrow the filtering is for whatever it is you're doing on the receive side. And it has digital signal processing. All right. So you want to build a POTA or portable station. Now, this is this is where we start going off the, the beaten path a little bit because now we're no longer talking about just, I'm a beginner ham. You're saying, no, I want to do something niche. I want to do something specific. And maybe I don't want a station in a small location in my home. Now, the best radio for you is going to be totally different than saying, oh, yeah, you want a big honking suitcase that you put on your uh, in your table here. And that's your operating position. No, no, no. I want my operating position to be a picnic table out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, cool. So that's uh, what we're going to talk about. So your goals and your requirements to purchase a radio for the best radio for you is going to be totally different. Portable goals. 
Well, you want it to be portable, right? Ideally, backpack movable. Maybe you'll go for something a bit bigger, but you're likely not going to be carting it around very far. Or maybe you're going to run out of the back of your vehicle. A lot of people do that. Or maybe you're not going anywhere outside your vehicle. You're going to sit right in the driver's seat, and you're going to operate right from the driver's seat using a radio that's pre-installed in your vehicle. The quote-unquote portability here, then, is going to vary completely based off of what you need. Ideally, though, if you're going to be doing parks on the air or something that is at lower elevation like a park i would recommend 100 watts again highly recommend that actually i think that uh poda specifically in the lower elevation parks you want to do 100 watts you can make a go with qrp but you start to feel like you're wasting your time and you end up taking a decent chunk of time and not making a lot of contacts for your effort. Antenna becomes vital at that point in the types of antenna you're going to deploy, how you deploy it, its alignment, all that stuff becomes really important. So aim for 100 watts. Ease of use in the field. All right. I'm going to I'm gonna both like slam the FT891 and I'm also going to give it like a bunch of attaboys um, in this space because we're going to talk about the A91. It, it is the radio that that people should consider for, for parks on the air uh, concerning its availability as far as a radio. So some good options that you would potentially look for in a parks on the air or portable radio, some kind of a tuner, whether it's internal or external. Maybe you're going to be building a little go box or something along those lines or a go bad bag. Input output for digital modes, we call that IO, input output. So that USB connection, there's not really a lot of portable radios that have that USB connection outside of the ICOM 705, but that's uh, QRP. And then GPS, and, and QRP means like 10 watts or lower output. We're aiming for 100 watts for portable, particularly for parks. And it'd be cool if you had GPS timekeeping for locations in the field, particularly if you want to do a digital mode like FT8. It's required to have an accurate time source to be able to do that. All right, so for portable HF radio recommendations, so if you had to recommend to somebody, hey, somebody said to me, you watching this video perhaps, hey, Josh, what is the best amateur radio for parks on the air? Ah, okay, we can answer that one. You're likely going to be, the cheap option is going to be under $1,000. The well-appointed, from my point of view, is going to be $1,500 or under. Your cheap options is the FT891 is probably the best. And uh, then the G90 fits again because it's small, it's cheap, it's not great. It doesn't hit the rugged or reliable category from my point of view, but it is an option. But it's not rugged or reliable, it's cheap. The well-appointed station would be the 705 from ICOM, the Elecraft KX2. Those are both QRP radios. And the well-appointed could just be take the, the radio, you know, that you just bought. Maybe it's that 7300 or that FTDX10 and carry it out into the field. Put it in an Apache case and take it out. If you're only planning on doing, this is a, this is a discussion I have with people a lot. If you only plan on doing, if, like, to do a Parks on the Air two to three times a year, then it's actually not much pain to just disconnect your radio and take it out in the field. It takes you like 30 minutes, if that, to get it all boxed up and in the car. If instead you're going to be doing parks on the air every weekend, hitting that thing hard, then disconnecting and reconnecting and disconnecting and reconnecting is going to get just super annoying after a while. Unless you build around that, right? There's some things you can do to kind of build around that. Other than just buy a second radio, like an 891, that you have just devoted to doing parks on the air. Keep that in mind. So looking at the A91, $679 right now on at HRO if you're interested. That is mine. Um, I took those side... Uh, brackets off but I did my kid did yank the coax on this thing you just yeeted it off of a, a uh, picnic table actually it's it was the backyard table onto concrete and it bent the one of the arms a little bit radio fine amazed uh, so if you plan on doing portable I highly recommend putting arms on your radio for that exact reason. People hook antennas, coax, radio wires, rip things off, and your radio is just going to go yeeting across the pavilion area, and you're going to be real sad from just one activation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm both uh, 
quick connect, uh, quick disconnect connector on the coax for sure. There are instances though where that won't work, but it's an extra level of security. Those quick connects, disconnects are great. I've got a couple of those, but I've got a. It's going to be a part of a video I'm going to talk about. So the the price of the 891, you're really paying for the portability. From my point of view, again, these are these are my subjective opinions. It's an extremely portable package for 100 watts. 100 watt radio. There's really nothing that compares to its uh, size and its portability, and that's about it. Like that's that's its major selling points. To be honest, I'm kidding, of course, but there's not a lot else going on with the radio. It has it has pretty good digital signal processing. A lot of people sound like they're um, they they've got like a water like they're underwater or that kind of uh, liquidy type of voice. It's kind of hard to explain if you haven't experienced it. Some people are okay with that. Some people hate it, but it does a pretty good job of dealing with some of the background noise. Pretty good from my my point of view. It does integrate natively with the ATOS 120. So if you are thinking about being a POTA operator that just sits in your vehicle, never gets out of the driver's seat, does a little stealth operation, just jams into that park, hits the ATOS, tunes it up, makes 10 contacts and boogies, not bad. That's a that's actually a plus. That's kind of how they get around not having a tuner is it just tunes the antenna. You have to buy the, the Yesu antenna and it's not cheap, but yeah. So as far as the drawback, because its major value is it's in, in its slim and portable shape, it doesn't have a lot of features. No tuner, no voice, no voice memories, no key memories. The screen is no frills, is what I would say. It works wonderfully for its intended role. If I were to put it onto a table and say, this is my base station ham radio, I think I would become tired of it uh, relatively quickly. It's also fairly clunky with the uh, system menu that it has, which we call the Deep F menu. But if you are hot to trot on POTA and you want to get on the air and do it well with a good radio, this is likely the one. To, to be honest, I, I really can't take away from the radio from a, a standpoint of portable radio. It's great, which is what you want. All right, so the big takeaway here, and it goes along with if you're following along at home, and if I have not answered your question, I'm going to recap my points here. One, we're going to take a list of things. We're going to write down our budget. We're going to write down what functionality we're looking for. And if we don't know the functionality, we're going to write down what it is within amateur radio we want to do. Do I just want to jimmy jam on the repeaters and, and rag chew on HF? Well, that's likely a certain road of, of options that you're going to look at. If you want to do portable operation, also a specific road. If you want to do APRS on a handheld or APRS on a mobile VHF, UHF radio, that is going to be a different set of options. So there is no best. There is just different. There are different radios that are better at certain aspects of the hobby than other radios. I want you to consider the robustness of the radio, the reliability of the radio. Sometimes we like to give little jabs to some of the Chinese radios because they're not as reliable as their Japanese counterparts. I think that's a safe generalization to make. I appreciate it as one, but I think it's safe to make that. So go to a store if you can. Go to a club. Visit a friend. Find somebody who has one of these radios and go hands-on. So you, you did the write-up. You've narrowed, you filtered down on a slim set of options of radios that sound interesting to you. Now go find one that you don't necessarily have to buy and that isn't being sold by somebody that may be giving you, not to say people are giving you the hard press sales routine, but you need to consider, you know, where you're looking at it in light of what um, what eyes have been on it. And then also it's really good to hear from just the owners of the radios. They really don't have any skin in the game to tell you what they like and don't like about the radio or try to capitulate to their, you know, their job that they have in like a retail space. I'm not saying anybody does that. I'm just saying friends are often really good. So are clubs. Um, that's another good place, but go hands-on, get, get hands-on with these radios, go touch all the buttons, all the knobs, go into those deep system menus and make sure that you are, are okay navigating them because they can be a pain in the butt. And while I love the YouTubes, thanks everybody for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't already today. Well, I love the, uh, the, the YouTubes for showing how radios work and what options exist and going through into some detail, some great detail in, in some cases. It's not great at telling you if a radio is good for you. You're the only one that knows that at the end of the day. And that's really where we're going with this. And that didn't work at all again. So that's, there's my, uh, there's my slides.
That's it. All right. Oh, hey. Thank you for the super chat, Off Grid Pete. Another option, IC7300, FT710, both fit nicely in expensive Harbor Freight box for when you want to, I think you meant inexpensive. And uh, I did say Apache case, and that's what I meant. Those are inexpensive Harbor Freight uh, water resistant boxes. They were at least called Apache back in the day, so I don't know if they still are. Um, yeah, so there's another, that's a niche radio from my point of view, the TX500 by Lab599. Good radio, but niche, uh, but good. Also QRP, probably not the one that I would necessarily start people out on. But yeah, so if there are questions in the chat, let's see them. I'll take them live, or you can join us on the after chat. And um, yeah, I'm an ICOM shill. I love ICOM. I, I also have no problem pointing out where I think radios are... are um, are good and bad. Um, Arthur, another great stream. Thanks, Josh. Thank you very much. See, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Okay. Let while I wait for questions to come in, I'll run through the the likes and don't likes on all these radios. Ready? Including the icon. All right. Yesu, it's small. I love the size. The trigger on the side's awesome. I don't like that it's single channel. The scanning's also weird. Baofeng, it's just, I mean, it's spur. It's a spurious emissions machine. I like the upper and lower channels. I hate that you have to buy an external battery to get the uh, coaxial plug. By and large, they're pretty okay. Um, the VX6 is dead simple. Bulletproof, drop it in the water. Tri-band's great. I don't like the fact that it doesn't have a top and bottom dual channel screen. The menu controls on this are a little funky, like going to uh, turn on and off the um, offset capabilities for a repeater. It'll auto plus or minus offset. I don't like that. I want it just off or on. Kind of a pain. The FT5, I like all of the FT lines. I have bought all of them and used all of them. I think they're a bit expensive. The touch screen is pretty bad. The screen is pretty small. The APRS controls are pretty pretty bad, to be honest. I think they're a kludgy solution. They could have done better in that space, but it's still one of the only radios that does it, so we just accept it because that's how it works. The lack of a keypad bothers me. The speaker's a little small. It doesn't sound that great. It um, Audio quality on the receive is not fantastic, but it's okay. All in all, it's a good portable radio for taking into the field. The ICOM. Uh, also, no keypad. Fantastic speaker output. Much bigger, though. Pretty expensive. Um, no APRS. That's my big problem with this radio. I would use this way more if it had APRS. It doesn't, so I don't often use it. The standout feature is the micro SD card will use the location of the repeater in conjunction with your GPS and show you repeaters that are local to you. So you almost always can make a connection. So there you go. There's all of my, um, that's what I like and don't like about all those radios. See, that's how you be objective. At least that's my, uh, my attempt. <laughs> hey, Don. Wow, Don. Hey, Don, thank you so much. Wow, Don, thank you for the super chat. He says, you are incredible at moving slowly through the side slides and yet keeping an eye on the chat. Thanks. <laughs> um, I, I have a secret, guys. I don't know if you know this. I am an engineer. And um, in today's engineering world, that means we build a lot of PowerPoints. I have developed many things by PowerPoint. While all my code is generally done in, in software development, I have been a systems engineer for quite some time. Systems engineers get down on some PowerPoint. So I have been talking in front of groups of people making slides for decades now. <laughs> so thank you, Don. I appreciate it. I got real good at it. Dave and Temecula, appreciate what you do. Well, thank you, Dave and Temecula. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, 705 is best HD. Yeah, dude, I, I actually have dealt with that. I, 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 uh, I asked, uh, I asked, um, what am I thinking about? Oh, 705. I asked Ray, could they do something where you had a button that flipped like vertical? And I think he told me like, no, <laughs> flat up. No, I don't remember. I have to ask him again. It's ham radio. So I don't know if that's a question. It is a question, but it says it's. So you said, is ham radio supposed to build on the bleeding edge? Well, uh, I'm going to go full screen on this one, Gene, because your question is a good one. If you were to ask me, 
if I was if I was uh, running any if I was product development or um, some major leadership decision maker at any one of the major radio companies, if you ask me, we're going to make a bleeding edge radio. I'd probably not do that. Um, so yes, amateur radio is supposed to be on the bleeding edge. And there are plenty of amateurs who are always pushing the envelope of integrating things into the hobby. It's part of the reason why we have technologies that exist outside of amateur radio exist because of the experimentation done by hams. But if you want to make a product and keep a business alive, you generally have to make things that are going to be reliable, right? That you don't just get a run of returns on, that you're constantly fixing or modifying and revalidating, re making changes, fixing all that stuff that's not great so cutting edge also it's really bad for the business from a standpoint of your consumer base because um i i gylan um jillen jeez i don't know how to pronounce your name i'm sorry if i were to say here is a cutting edge radio that you're buying from a major manufacturer and it didn't work it wouldn't matter how many times I repeated cutting edge, cutting edge, cutting edge. I would lose all kinds of brand uh, loyalty by dropping something like that. The, the major brands would lose all their loyalty in, in, in a month if they dropped a, a turd on the table and said, here you go. Here's your cutting edge radio that um, will work 50% of the time. Yeah, James, that's a great point. So a lot of the kit builders, the the what I would call cottage industry kit builders like QRP Labs, QRP is a fantastic example, James, good job, is leading edge kit as well as the micro bit X. Also true. Great job. Um, no, I don't agree. Colin and VK, they, they need to make more 10 meter single sideband. I don't agree. I think I think you just need to get yourself a 10 meter single sideband HF radio at like 40 watts, get yourself a 40 watt mobile type jobber for 10 meters. Um, yeah, I don't know. HTs for 10 meters is not great. You, you, you need a, you need a serious, seriouser antenna. Uh, what aftermarket antenna are you using on the VX six and does it remain submersible? Yeah. The, um, the antenna is not what provides the submersibility. So the link is in the description for Signal Stick. That is a orange and glow in the dark tip signal stuff signal stick. I leave this on when I'm backpacking. When I get to the location that I'm going to be staying at or whatever, I will switch that over to a roll up J pole antenna or a smiley quarter, sorry, half wavelength telescopic antenna. You don't want to hike with either of those antennas on there, though. Um, yeah, A. Hendrix asked, it's not out officially yet, but do you have an opinion on the new Kenwood THD 75? Yeah, it's uh, the THD 74 with minor um, upgrades. I think it does digipeating now, if I can remember correctly, but not much else is different. I think it's really just been modified to get around the chip shortage that we've been seeing as amateur radio manufacturers have been dealing with that kind of stuff. I am really curious to see what the price is going to be. I'm expecting it to be high. I said it. There you go. All right. We've blown through the hour in record time. I think I got to most of the questions. I would love it if you joined us on the after chat over on the Discord. So if you haven't already started getting Discord synced up and joining over there, it's free to join. And our group is an inclusive um, amateur radio server. Almost everything we do there is talk about amateur radio, different forms of it, all the niches within niches. But this is our live after chat where we answer your questions. So if you can get in the voice chat, you can ask it live or we'll take your text. We go for at least two hours. It's often usually three or four. And I've actually got a, uh, a bag that I want to show off. So I'll drop a link in the description for this bag. It's uh, I'm going to be swapping bags. My Elecraft KX2, I think, is going to move into a new home. Like a hermit crab, it's it's going to find a new home. All right, join me on the after chat, guys. There'll be a YouTube video that I post here. It'll probably get started in about 15 to 30 minutes. Same channel. It's just going to be a different video as I wrap this one up. Thanks a lot for watching. Discord link is in the description, Paul. That's how you can find it. Appreciate it. I almost did it again. I almost ended before uh, 
before wrapping up the show. Uh, no, it's not a Tom Big Tom Bin. It's a um, it's a new case for the for the radio, like a modular case. It's it's a uh, K six ARK recommended case. Mmm. Oh man, Ahmed or Ahmed, thank you, thank you for the super chat. I got an epic fail hippo. <laughs> Was the stream an epic fail? <laughs> but thank you for the twenty dollars. Uh, let's see. Having put mine in my cradle, cradle at Super Agile use. Yep. KJ five BNF just passed my general this morning. Congratulations, Jay. Game over. Game over, man. Game over. Thank you to the patrons. Their vote will be going out for Patron Picks episode, which will be two Saturdays from now. That will be going out likely tomorrow with you all, the patron, the producer-level patrons, to vote on what the show topic will be. If you'd like to help support the channel, the link is in the description for Patreon, along with the Discord. So join us. Join us, won't you? I would appreciate it. I want to make sure I'm not losing any uh, questions. There we go. All right, we're good. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the memes. I'll talk to you on the after chat here shortly. And I got a special question on that one, too. I got a spicy comment that dovetails nicely with today's show. So join us over there and share your input. See ya. Thanks, Jody. Appreciate you, buddy. <laughs>